okay welcome back guys so we are right at um, the start of skinning the head where you're going to cut uh, is going to be exactly where the skin is. basically the borderline where the hair or the feather on the skin meets the, um, the around the mouth around the beak around the chin and around the nose that's where it needs to be I, I think it's kind of visible right now when I'm looking at it at the same time I think you can easily see you can all, always open the beak a little bit and uh, it gives you a better idea where to cut and all you need to have is a sharp scalpel blade a pointy one to create a scar or um, incision all around just create that incision all around and then with the help of spatula and your fingernails you can easily start pulling the skin away you just have to spend a good amount of time and also sharpen up your patience because this is a very detailed job but after a while it gets easier and easier for you and sometimes you might think that why do we have to do this um, it's just one method and I believe when I have the skull out of the head I can make a cast and when I have the casted skull I can adjust the eyes I can adjust all the details of the face right on the table without having the skin attached to my skull and blocking my view you can do it the other way too but this makes it a lot more I will I will say it's a lot easier you spend the time you cr you make it more difficult for skinning but after a while that gets easy but at least you get to see what you're doing with the skull in your hand you can use the same skull like the natural skull but I still if even if I want to do that I still detach it and re-glue it back on because over the years I've um, realized that if I have the skull in my hand while I'm working on it I can easily create a face much more detailed and much um, a lot better faster with more accuracy comparing to just uh, using um, basically mounting it while I have the skin attached to the skull so as you can see the skin is slightly peeling off of the chin and uh, you need to skin it around at the same time go quarter of an inch or one eighth of an inch all around at the same time and if you think that uh, it's going to be if the, if the bird is too small or this, the skin is basically too small to grab for you you can use tweezers or you can peel it back or push the skin back with using the spatula the tip of a spatula so the combination of these tools will help you do a good job of skinning yeah I, um, I have to say it again it doesn't hurt because uh, if you keep skinning all around the face at the same time you you are putting the least amount of pressure on the skin because uh, you can easily tear that skin from the corner of the mouth or right in the center of the nose area if you keep skinning from one side like let's say if you keep skinning from underneath the lower mandible and just keep going toward the, th the throat and leaving the eyes is still attached just you're going in a crooked angle and you're putting a lot of pressure on the skin in that way so you'd better just keep going around at the same pace and just make sure that when you're going around the eyes um, go slow and don't cut the skin like the eyelids because it can easily happen
there are some birds that uh, it's literally not worth it to do it this way. Um, I did a few bird mounts for Alberta Royal Royal Alberta Museum. They were um, ibis. Actually, ibis was easy to skin the skull out. I did a um, stilt, black neck stilt, uh, and the size of the the opening of the skin around the beak was so small that, and the skull was too big that there was no way I could pull out that skull through the mouth opening. So I left the skull attached and I just um, mounted it just traditional way with the skin attached. But uh, if the bird allows for skinning this way, uh, I'll, I'll do it that way. I'll do it this way. So now you can see I'm passing the ears. So basically the whole skull is skinned out. and. I'm just checking the quality of the eye. The skin has been rehydrated quite well. Now cutting the neck right from where it's attached to the skull. So we can put the skull away for casting if it's needed. If it's needed. Yeah, the whole skull is skinned out right now. Okay, I usually take the skull out first and then proceed for regular skinning, doing the incision on the breast. Yeah, from here on it, it must be quite familiar for most of you guys. Push the feathers aside and a little bit of a spray water keeps them, keeps the feather wet and keep them aside. Right from the top of the keel bone or just slightly beside it, you make a slight incision on the skin. It doesn't need to be too deep to cut the meat up, but if you do, it's not a big deal, as long as you don't cut through the abdomen and the gut area. So um, we start peeling the skin on the breast to the side and move forward that way. So now if you, uh, you can see that the dried skin around the gut area has created a little bit of difficulty here too. But not too bad to the point that we cannot skin it. So here again my favorite tool, the fish skinning tool is great for actually uh, anything. <laughs> it does, it does uh, everything for me. Okay, um, now I'm pushing the, the knee right through the skin pushing my finger right underneath the knee as soon as I am uh, basically clear about not cutting the skin I put my scalpel underneath it and cut the knee off repeating the same process on the other side peeling the skin off the body use your tool to keep skinning and skinning it basically you're peeling it off it's not necessarily called skinning but uh, it's the same thing so now pushing the knee area again up and making sure that I can push my finger underneath the knee that means that the skin has been rolled down the drumstick low enough that uh, if I want to Cut it off I'm not going to cut any skin there you go just take your time with the scalpel these uh, these blades are quite sharp and they have no conscience so now we're going toward the, um, the rectum keep skinning and peeling off till you pass the rectum area and get close to the um, tail feather quills. As soon as you get to that rudder bone, snip it off with your sight cutter. Now we're getting toward the back side of the bird from the bottom area, from the lower part. And um, 
keep different tools handy so you can use them like small plier, needle nose plier and everything because they'll come in handy. So now we got the bird skinned out from the lower part, we're going toward the wings now. Again, you push all the skin, peel all the skin away from the breast meat till you see the junction between the, uh, the, um, the wing bone and the breast meat and where exactly it starts I like to create um, uh, my, my solid breast bone I like to keep it in there so I don't cut through the breast meat I dig out the whole wing bone perfectly leaving the uh, breast meat alone because I'm going to need it for creating my body. So that size and the shape of it is always uh, helpful. Every little detail will help you create a better mount. So just dig out the wing bone from behind the breast meat and leave the breast meat undisturbed. I'll show you how to keep it frozen too. Now we pull the neck out of the skin. Now we got our body. We put it aside for freezing. Now we're continuing finishing the, um, the skinning of the legs and the wings. Just peel off the drumsticks all the way to the heel and stop right at the heel. If you notice I'm using a lot of uh, basically I, I do a lot of peeling with my nails although I always have short nails but it's good enough whatever some people have longer nails for this use their thumbnails as a tool but I don't like them. I like them to be short, but I can still use them while I keep them short. By cutting the tendons of the drumstick, it makes it easier for you to peel off the meat in one shot instead of picking at it. Cut off the tendons right from the heel, and then um, you can peel it off. Same thing with the other drumstick. A little bit of a borax powder I use here. If you wonder what it is, it's borax powder. Not for any purpose other than giving me a better grip. Uh, in the old, old days I used to use fine sawdust, but then they get to stick to feathers a little bit more than borax. So I cut the tendons, one in the front, one in the back, and then I can easily Grab my plier and peel off the meat in one piece. Very simple. Now with the wings, um, I don't like to invert them. I keep every wing just like the way they're attached to the uh, radius bone. I keep them that way. Of course, the first part of the wing, as you can see, it's, uh, it's easy to clean. But the middle part, or the second part, I'll just uh, clean it from, from this angle a little bit. And the rest of it I clean with making an incision under the skin, under the, under the wing, on the skin. Yeah, I'm trying to keep the skin uh, away from the meat in that part of the wing as well, so I can clean everything as much as I can from this side. Cutting the tendons off, the muscle tendons that are attached to the bone, cutting them off right from the beginning where they're attached so it gives you a, a better, uh, like basically a better grip for them to peel them off in one piece. Just like the drumstick but you can only do it halfway because uh, we're not going to invert the uh, wing skin, we're going to just leave it like that. And then we'll get at the other half from the other side.
side cutter. This side cutter has never cut any wire. <laughs> it has only been, been used on my desk for cutting the tendons and meat. So I do a lot of scraping with paring knife too because that, that's a satisfying method of cleaning meat off the bones. So as you can see I'm cleaning as much as I can from this side and then I peel the skin over the wing again and the other half part of the wing that is still got meat and muscles in there I just make an incision there's two feather tracks on the wing just make sure that you cut right between them where there is lots of down cut through the down because when you're sewing it back up you're not disturbing any of the feather quills under the wing especially for birds that are going to be in flying position uh, we need to have everything in perfectly groomed out uh, under wing and on top of the wing when we're doing a um, flying mount and this Shepson Hawk we know eventually we decided how we're we going to mount it and it's going to be in an action mode so a lot of uh, movement will be happening on that bird when it's mounted Yeah, you can easily peel off the meat toward the end and then cut the tendons and uh, make sure that you're pulling the whole meat in, in uh, one piece because that's uh, avoiding to leave any small pieces in behind. And if there was anything left, you can easily clean that with tweezers or scraping off with paring knife, doesn't matter. As long as you remove them and clean them. So I got, I believe I, I did both wings here, or maybe just one wing for, um, for saving the time. I think I just, yeah, I just filmed only one wing. Now all we have to do, the tool that you see I'm using here is basically used a jigsaw blade that I created a handle for them, two different saw blades, and uh, they make a great fleshing tool. And um, I can, I, I love to hand flesh these things by, uh, by my hand and not putting them on any wire wheel. They don't have enough fat for wire wheel. I just use my uh, hand tools. I've, I've used um, jigsaw blade in two different um, in tooth size for different areas. And there's not a lot of fat on most of these hawks but there is a membrane that you need to peel off the skin make sure that it's gone because they can create problem in your mount by drying out fast and also uh, the feather tracks the quills underneath the skin they need to be separated from one another they don't have a lot of fat there's just a lot of membrane tissue connecting them together and of course as you can see the, the tail feather quills they have some more meat and fat around them that you can easily clean. What you see I'm spraying is water, just keeping the skin fresh and um, quite stretchy so when I'm working on it it's not going to tear on me. Because the, the drier it gets the easier, the, the, the more brittle it'll be. This is the mem membrane I just peeled off the leg as you noticed. So the drier the skin, the easier it will be tearing on you. <clears throat> so this was the second part of the video. I, uh, I'm gonna let you watch the rest of it, which is basically just cleaning. You can see where I'm working on. I wish I didn't have this headlight on because it's creating a lot of contrast. I cannot see what I'm doing. Uh, sorry guys, but I had to see better because uh, the work needed to be done properly. So anyway, uh, thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you uh, used some of the tips in there if you didn't know. And um, we will be putting this bird together soon and I'll, uh, I'll upload the video as well. So if you liked the video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Share it with your friends, whoever who is involved with the uh, art, art of taxidermy. And um, 
let them know that uh, the channel is still going with full speed and weekly videos. Okay, thank you very much again. We'll see you next week.